Hi, John with eTrailer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Curt Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2019 Hyundai Sonata. So first impressions of the Curt hitch. Um, yeah, it's tucked back in here. Uh, this is a Class 1 receiver, uh, and it is hardly visible when it's on the car. Now, uh, no matter which brand you go with, Draw Tight has one as well um, that has a different safety chain loop on it and it's a little bit different appearance, but they're both rated the same. It's really just gonna come down to personal preference. So let's take a closer look at the hitch. This is a class one hitch, meaning uh, the square tube opening here is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. It has a black gloss powder coat finish. It's gonna accept your half inch pin and clip. Now this pin and clip is not included. So if you're going to be towing with this, you're going to need to pick one up. We have some available here. We also have some that lock. If you're just getting accessories like bike racks or cargo carriers, most of those come with an anti-rattle clip already, so not to worry. Uh, the safety chain loops here are good size. They'll accept all sorts of different chain hangers, even a clevis style hook. So let's talk about some weight capacities on this hitch here. Now for a class one, it reads pretty good. Uh, you have a 200 pound tongue weight. Now that's gonna be the weight that's pushing down on the hitch. Um, and as far as gross trailer weight ratings, that's gonna be 2,000 pounds. That's gonna be the weight pulling on the hitch. Now these numbers are gonna be more than enough if you're looking to get uh, a bicycle rack or a cargo carrier. Now let's go ahead and get some uh, measurements. And there's two that I like. One is from the ground to the top inside of the hitch, and that's gonna be 11 and a half inches. The other one is going to be from the inside center of the pinhole out to the back of the bumper, that's gonna be four inches. Now you wanna keep these measurements in mind when you're choosing accessories or if you already have accessories to make sure that they're gonna work for you. So final thoughts on the Kurt hitch. Look, this would be the one that I would pick if this was my car. I just like the way the Kurt looks over the draw tight with the round tube. Let's be honest, they're both underneath the car. You can't hardly see them anyway. But as far as installation goes, they'll both install about the same. This uh, went fairly easy, really. Uh, this is something you can definitely do on your driveway, uh, about 45 minutes or so. Um, we ran into a few issues. Our car does not have dual exhaust. Yours might, um, but we've got a few tips and tricks for you. Uh, stick around. We'll show you how we did it. So we have our Hyundai pulled inside. We pulled it up on the lift just to make it easier uh, to show you what we're going to be doing underneath the car. Now, you can do this on your driveway. You don't need a lift to do this. Uh, you can get this done with a jack and some jack stands. Our first step, we're going to be removing the exhaust here, or just lowering the exhaust. We're going to loosen up our exhaust hangers. Now we can just take our pry bar and go in between the muffler and the rubber and just push out. We have this one here. Now underneath the car, uh, about in line with the rear tires, you have another hanger. Now you'll notice I put a cam buckle tie down strap here, uh, just hung it from the trailing bars on either side and tightened it up. This way, uh, when we loosen this hanger, our exhaust doesn't just free hang and cause damage. Now this will give us the space that we need to be able to get the hitch up and over and attached to the frame. Now if you have dual exhaust, just go ahead and repeat this process on the driver's side. If you don't, you're going to have a plastic panel like we do. We'll show you. Now on the driver's side, we have this panel here. It's going to be held in place with four push pins. They look just like this. You can use a flathead screwdriver. Go ahead, pop that out, and then get underneath and remove it. Go ahead and repeat that for the remaining ones. Next, we'll need to remove two 10 millimeter nuts. One's up here on the frame. The other one is over here. Go ahead and set the panel off to the side. So we're moving over to the passenger side of the car. We're going to be removing the heat shield. There's three 10 millimeter bolts just like this that you'll need to remove.
go ahead and pull this down and set it off to the side. Now our next step is gonna be up here on the frame and we're on the driver's side. Um, we're gonna be removing these foam discs. Uh, there's two of them up here and you can just kinda break through. And I'm just gonna use a screwdriver here. You can use a file or paint scraper or anything just to get these off of here. Now we're going to be enlarging um, this hole here. It's going to be the one closest to your tire. Uh, this, you do this on both sides as well. Uh, I've got a burr bit here. Um, you can use uh, a step bit or Dremel tool or whatever you need. What we need to do is enlarge this hole just enough to get the head of the bolt in and or block in there. So again, I've got a bit right here in my drill. I went ahead and enlarged the hole and we can go ahead and test fit just to make sure our bolts are going to fit up in there and the blocks. Uh, when you're doing this just think oval. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. More of an oval shape just to get this rectangle in here. Now that we know that these are going to fit, we'll go ahead and use some gloss clear and spray this on the frame to minimize corrosion. Now that the paint is dry, we're gonna go ahead and take one of the supplied fish wires, and we're gonna feed it up through the hole that's closest to the bumper, and we'll go with a spiral side in, and you can go ahead and stick your finger up inside the frame here, and you'll feel when that end gets close, and I put the tip of my finger on the end of it, give it pressure that way it just feeds out now we're going to go ahead and put one of the blocks on first we just go ahead and shove that up in the frame and we'll take the supplied carriage bolt here we're going to thread this on grab the other end of your fish line Tuck the bolt in. We're going to drag it through until the bolt comes out. Now we'll take the second supplied fish line and it's going to be the same idea with this hole, uh, but we're going to execute it a little bit differently. This time we're going to put the block on the wire and then we'll take the carriage bolt and thread that on here. This is, they call this a reverse fish wire same end result. This time we'll tuck the bolt up first, then the block. And then brought that down. What happened was the block got caught sideways in there. Uh, just kind of stick your finger or a screwdriver up there. We want the blocks running this way for right now. It's a good idea to get an extra set of hands. This hitch is kind of heavy and we'll go ahead and place this up. You want to be careful not to push the carriage bolts back up, back up into the frame. Just go ahead and get these hand tight to hold the hitch up here for right now. Now, if the hitch doesn't want to go up smoothly uh, on the passenger side, or if you have dual exhaust on both sides, um, you could try loosening your exhaust mount bracket. This is uh, two 12 millimeter bolts. That way we can loosen it and wiggle it to get it up and uh, tight up against the frame. We're gonna go ahead and snug these up. This is a three quarter inch socket on my half inch driver. Once these are snugged up on both sides, we'll go ahead and torque them to the specifications in the install manual.
Now we've got our plastic pan from the passenger side that we took off and we're going to have to do some trimming now that we added a hitch to it. We have some on this side and some this side that I marked with a paint pen. I'm just going to use some tin snips. If you have a Dremel tool or uh, a, a multi-tool, it will all cut this stuff the same. This stuff cuts really easy. So here we are on the underside of our passenger side of the car here. This is our finished product with our panel now, uh, and it's bolted up here. And look, I had to take this thing down like three times just to keep trimming this edge here and then the edge on the back side. Just take your time and um, just don't trim too much. Just do little bits at a time and eventually you're gonna get it. And we'll go ahead and pop the heat shield back up here. Now, it's gonna fit a little bit tighter because uh, it's hitting the hitch over here, but uh, it uh, still goes on with the same hardware that we took off. These are the 10 millimeter uh, washers. Now with the heat shield up, we can go ahead and rehang our exhaust the same way we took it off. And that's it for our look at the Curt Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2019 Hyundai Sonata.